All right, welcome back, Pio Nation. Uh, we are just a couple of moments away from our League of Legends match against Muskingum University. Um, my name is Matt Williamson. You're watching Merida College Esports. So everyone is in the lobby. I haven't seen anything with Pro Draft, but while we're waiting, we'll go ahead and get the uh, the roster up for our League of Legends team. So in the top lane, we have Senior Aaron Nee, uh, MC Michael Stradiata. We have in jungle Kyler Wheeler Raelic. In the mid lane, we have sophomore Leah Wietzerkowski, Muki12345. We have an AD carry senior Ian Darling, Brimstone Bro. And then at support, we have freshman Bethany Holstein, MaxiBoo101. Uh, and then at coach, uh, we have uh, Drake Newsom uh, helping with the, the team. So right now, just going over uh, strategies uh, or checking to see if teams need pro draft. So. It looks like everything is good there. So everyone's getting their ready check. So I need to get audio and everything set up because we may be getting this game underway real quickly. It looks like Marion is going to be on the blue side and Muskinga will be on the red side. All right, so let me get into Discord here. Everyone seems to be ready. Uh, so now just I have screen set. Here we go. All right. So let's see what fans we're going to see. Looks like Marion is going to be banning out the Scion. Oh, and Muskingo is yeah, going to be banning the Rek'Sai. And yeah, Muskingo. Marion is going to be banning out the Senna. There. That should be a little bit better. All right, Olaf's gonna be banned, and let's see what Marietta's uh, third ban is gonna be. I must not fall. Interesting, they're banning out the Leona because uh, Maxi likes to play Leona a lot, so they must have something else planned if they're. Not, and Hacker's gonna be banned, so Raelic will not be playing him. Is Marietta gonna go with the Seraphine flex pick? They like doing that a lot. Yeah, I'm going to introduce yourself since uh got your help with casting as well. Um uh my name is Tyler Sanicho. Uh and I will be helping with the cast today. Okay. Yeah, looks like Mary and we do appreciate you coming to help with commentating. Yeah, it looks like Mary is going with the Seraphine Flex pick. Uh, Musking was going to first pick the Malphite, uh, very strong top laner. Interesting to decide to go with that early on, and now I'm going to go with the Braum for support. So that's going to give Marietta some options, so they can go ahead and counter. They're going to go ahead and pick Lilia mm. for the jungle for Raelic. He's been, he's been playing a lot of Lilia lately, so I think he Wasn't goes... Wasn't he, like, what, he was good at Lilia before, though, like, even in the, the mid, like, when he played mid laner for the team, I think I remember he was still a pretty decent Lilia. But Lilia is a jungler. Lilia doesn't play is a, a mid laner. I know, but I think that like he's is one of his more comfortable junglers. Right. He likes playing Lilia and Hecarim a lot for jungles. That's why the Hecarim's been banned. And it looks like Lyco's gonna be going with the Nar to counter the the Malphite. And we're gonna see the Ash coming out for Muskingo. So this is going to be interesting band choices for Muskinga because they don't know if that Seraphine is going mid or if it's going support. And they can they can always ban out ADCs, but it's hard to predict which direction that Seraphine is going to be. Oh, so they're What's going to take the, the Jinx away happen? from Brimstone. Mary is going to take out the Kane. Kane's a very annoying uh, jungler to go up against, so it's, I can see why they do that. And, and Muskingo is taking out the Nautilus. They're thinking that that Seraphine could be a mid Seraphine. I won't be denied. And Mary is going to take out the Sejuani. I think that's going to be a Seraphine support just because 
Maxi's two top supports have been banned. But now we're going to see the Skarner come out from his kingdom. That could be very interesting. Just being able to drag someone, freeze them, and drag them into the back lines. That, uh, that will make things interesting. But now we're going to see what Marietta's final roster will be. The Brimstone's going to go with the Ezreal. Uh, it's one of his most comfortable uh, champions. I was thinking either an Ezreal or maybe a um, Misfortune from him. Well, he definitely wants the mobility to go up against the right. Ash. And... Uh, Ari? Ar 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's going to be a mid Ari. Seraphine is going support. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yuki loves the Ari. Right, but now we're going to see the Katarina come out from Muskingo. And Katarina is one of those where if you're not careful, she can 1v9. Yeesh. Maybe it's probably going to try to shut her down early so she doesn't get a, a, build, a, a good build for late game. Yeah, they're going to have to because with Ari's ult, like if she gets a kill while her ult's up, the ult resets. So imagine getting a couple kills and just having that ult extended even longer and she does like damage to everything around her so it's it's very annoying yeah you can definitely steam raw fights with that i i, I would presume yeah in fact actually my skin comp comp that look at is very good for that because you have the ash arrow to engage Braum can also, both Braum and Valfight can engage. You can pop both those ultis, and that can knock down and knock up the team. So you got a wombo combo there. And while that's going on, Katarina goes in to pop the ulti, and it's just instant win. With Marietta's comp, it's there's still some really good, some good moments here. Uh, Seraphine's Charm can actually connect quite a few people together. You combo that with Nars ulti. So getting stunned on the wall and then charms. Ezreal can pop the ulti to do a lot of damage to people. Lilia can put people to sleep. So yeah, I think this is going to come down to who gets the better engage. I agree. All right, while we are waiting, we'll go over a couple of announcements. So first and foremost, uh, we announced this yesterday. I've been talking about it all day today. We do have our official team store up. So you can get t-shirts, backpacks, hoodies, and your very own Marietta eSport jersey. And you can even customize the name on the back. You should buy my jersey. They could. They, they could do that. Um, or they can create their own. So in order to place your order, there are two different links. So the traditional apparel, you can go to bit.ly slash mcbsn2021. The jerseys have to be a separate store, just the way things are set up. Uh, so you go to bit.ly slash mcjersey2021. Uh, these are only available for a limited time. You have until March 15th to place your orders. Uh, but I mean, there's some really cool stuff there. I mean, if you take a look at the, the hoodie here, I mean, you, got, you can either get gray or blue hoodie with the white sleeve. I think that's really cool looking. Uh, the logos that we're using, we actually allowed our players to vote on the, the, the variants of the eSports logos. So we picked the, the top two uh, from that selection. So you can get combinations of maybe blue, white, and gray shirts, short sleeve, long sleeves. You can get hoodies. You can get hats, backpacks, gym bags, all sorts of stuff. And a portion of every sale does go directly to uh, the eSports uh, program. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we do have that. Uh, and then just as a reminder, even though the schedule here isn't completely accurate, just as a reminder for everyone that tonight uh, our Rainbow Six team will be going up against Elon University. Uh, so that would, so on here it says it happened yesterday at 8.30, but there was a schedule change at the last minute. So it's going to be tonight at 8 o'clock. So make sure you do come back for that uh, on here. Uh, right now the Rainbow Six team... Let me double check here. 
Uh, they Wait, are 16 minutes very Pog Champ. Mm -hmm. Well, they are one and two right now in uh, collegiate R6, but they are hoping to get a, a win today. So that would put them at two and two. All right, so the game is loading up. I'm just going to get correct overlays set up here. So once the game is fully loaded, uh, we will get that to you. Oh, man, I don't really like any of these skins. I mean, that sort of one's kind of nice. This one's pretty good. The KDA skins are always uh, popular with people. Yeah, it seems like she has one of those character models. Oh, not, oh I'm stupid. Um, never mind. Scratch what I said. Okay. All right, so let me get things here set up. Okay, and get audio up and running. All right, so here we go, folks. Marietta College versus Muskingum University. Marietta's on the blue side, Muskingum is on the red side. This is a best of three. No, I haven't kept up with the league team too too much uh, this year. As I kept up with it well, quite a bit more last year, but um. How are we doing in the standings at the moment? In the GLEC, um, let's see here. One, two. We are, so what is this? Three, three, six. We are. Hold on, I just put that in the wrong place here. Give me a second here. I gotta update my sheets here because it was not quite correct. Minions have spawned. Uh, let's see here. So that means. See, they're five and five overall, but that includes Seelol. So they are three and two. Yeah, they're three and two in the GLDC right now. So this is week, week six. Not bad, not bad. No. Especially after we had some. um. Not necessarily roster changes, but role swaps, I guess you could say. Yeah, but there was a small change. There were a couple of changes in the roster from last semester. Uh, but all things considered, they're they're doing okay, but not too different from, from last semester. So and I think this match is favorable for Marietta, but it's just a matter of making sure that we don't give away anything uh, early on. I agree. No, don't give Muskingum a chance to get any early picks, especially with the, the, the composition that they are running. An early pick from Muskingum could lead to, like, them getting a slight advantage, and that slight advantage could lead to steamrolling steam a fight. Yeah, I would expect uh, Raylick to try to get uh, the focus in the mid lane. And we're already seeing Seraphine has to flash and take Maximum a lot of damage. Fall here probably, but oh. yeah, she, she barely gets out with her life. They'll be fine. Just they'll just have to back out though, or uh already popped one healing potion to be able to sustain, but that does mean Skarner can try to uh, do uh, a gank and down there. Merida not not looking too hot in the bot lane right off the bat at the moment, but it is early game, so I guess Muskingum is trying to set set a pace, set a standard that they're trying to dominate the bot lane, maybe, so they're trying to pressure out Marietta's players more. I don't think... It, uh, I'm not concerned yet. I mean, the Ash is going to be doing quite a bit of poking. But, like, I, I don't think that early round you go for a play like that unless you're trying to set the standard like well, you see them like they heavily pushed in to get that kill on maxi boo and they could have gotten it if they continued the aggression i think that they didn't have minions so they couldn't push keep pushing them well a very common strategy is like if you hit level two first you go in on level two and try to make a quick play so i think we'd have to double check but i think muskingum did hit level two before um brimstone and maxi did so as soon as they hit level two they're like okay we're going in so it's very common to do level two power plays like that. That sounds pretty uh like decent of a strat. Mm -hmm. 
See so Lyco getting a, some damage onto uh, the Malphite up there. So overall doing very well in CS in the, in the top lane. Even mid lane, Yuki's pretty holding pretty well against that uh, Katarina, but it's the late game Katarina that had to be scared about. Both, both teams evenly matched when it comes to gold uh, levels. It seems like we're evenly matched as well about, I think, uh... A couple, well, Muki is level 5, and compared to, I think it, who is it there, their Kane in the mid lane, who's, yeah, yeah. not the Kane there, um... Well, it's Katarina as the, the yeah, champion. Yeah, who's only level 4, so Muki's doing, currently, in ahead, I would say, in the mid lane. But it seems as though teams are evenly matched when it comes to level at the moment, so... If he gets a great charm there on the, the Katarina, just to put some damage on her. Although, she's going to be careful. She does not have any more mana, so it's going to be hard to get an engage. blood onto uh the katarina and mm -hmm. that might be able to snowball into taking the drake this fight i would presume marietta goes to take the drake this fight not yet they, they got to get control of bot lane before they can do that but no it was a great engage there uh katarina did try to pop her ulti was at level six but um yuki and red were able to keep their distance to outrange it and they were able to take uh to kill and get first blood yeah, I would expect that the, the strategy is to try to shut down the Katarina as much as possible. However, we do see Skarner over here uh, is working on the uh, Ocean Drake undetected. So, okay. Muskinga will get the first Drake. Uh, I don't know if that's like a missed call by Marietta or proper, improper, like, ward placement in the jungle, but yeah, it's just... you should not get that Drake for free. Well, it... A great ulti there by Lyco, getting a lot of damage, forcing the flash from the Malphite. But, but no, I mean, there's just no, not enough vision down there. And the bot lane was pretty even, so there was no way for Marietta to respond. But yeah, so Ocean Drake will go to Muskingo. Still somewhat evenly matched. Uh, Marietta has a gold lead at the moment, and I think they still have a, a level lead, I would say. Uh, no, both evenly matched. I wouldn't worry um, so much. I wouldn't worry so much about level differences just yet, although Skarner is looking to get a pick, and Yuki is going to dash away, gets the charm onto it, and here comes Relic to try to get the counter gang, forcing uh, Kale to dash away, doesn't burn a flash for it. Yuki almost, almost getting punished there. But yeah, but now we are starting to see some of the CS differential. So Marietta is up, but uh, we're seeing Katarina is getting ahead in CS over Muki. We are seeing that Fruit Vendor Army is getting ahead in CS over Brimstone. And I think that's going to play a role later on. The big difference with the CS is in the top lane. Lyco's doing a very good job staying ahead of CS over the over Malphite, trying to keep him zoned out, giving him a chance for being able to get CS. So I think this is going to really come down to Relic and uh Lyco for this game.
almost 10 minutes into the game. Not much has happened still, but still very evenly in the poke. I guess both teams are just playing it slow, trying to build up their kits for their respective heroes and before actually engaging in some type of stance or something. However, Relic and Miki want to get like, this kill under the Katarina, but the, the um, Murdy's does come, or I forgot how to pronounce his name. Def Defies comes to help. Yeah, so we saw the, the power the, the power of uh, the ulti from Katarina. It was enough to take out Relic, and now they're evening up in gold with that kill. So it was a double gank in that mid lane. Uh, Relic tries to take down Katarina, but she pops the ulti. And now starting to get ahead. That, that's what you do not want to see. You do not want to see uh, a Katarina winning her her lane, because that's going to make team fights very scary. And with the Katarina getting the kill, she is probably going to retreat back to maybe maybe retreat back to spawn and get up her kit, which is not going to be good for the long end game for Marietta. Uh, Earthstrike is about to spawn in like a minute. And Marietta should Marietta should play around trying to build this get this Drake. They can't they can't afford to give Muskingum another Drake for free. But at the moment both teams still evenly matched, but the Katarina might be able to pick uh, or looks to just poke out Miki here. Trying to gain the mid lane advantage. Nice done from Lyco. Yeah, just trying to do some poke damage to try to continue zoning out uh, the Malphite. And it's working very well. 72 CS to 41 is a substantial difference. But now, because of how well the other lanes are going, Muskingum has the gold lead. And once again, we see that Katarina ult taking out Muki. She committed. This that that's this is really bad for Mary at the moment. The Katarina has two kills. Mary's gonna have to do something to, to they, they need to shut her down now with ten seconds remaining until the Earth Drake comes in. The Katarina is probably gonna be really strong at the moment, so. And we're gonna start seeing everyone converge over to that Mountain Drake. We see Raylix already down there. Bot lane's looking to try to push the lane so they can get control. <clears throat> so we are seeing some, like everyone hovering around looking for a possible fight. Teleport's going to be coming in, but it gets canceled. The so Lyco was coming in, but it, it did not happen. And that might be Muskingum's opportunity because now Malphite can uh, teleport in. And we're seeing Muskingum starting up the, the Mountain Drake and Verita's going to concede it. Yeah, they're not. I don't think that they're in a position right now to take a fight against the Drake. They, they probably could, but they would definitely get highly punished for it. Mountain Union, or not Mountain Union, Muskingum going to take the second Drake of the match. Right now, I feel like, even though it feels like uh, both teams are evenly matched right now, it feels like Muskingum is just playing map control a lot better. Yeah, they have quite a bit of vision down. We see the, uh, the bottom river is heavily warded by Muskingum. And right now, the only lane that's winning from area is that top lane. So it is going to be very difficult for... Like, Marina's only down 500 gold with all that said, but the, the problem is things are going to start snowballing. Right. Turret plating will soon be falling. Miki has to be careful with her HP in the mid lane here. 
And we know that that Katarina is not afraid to go in for the kill. You see Rayla coming by, they know that the uh, his jungle is being invaded. But it's going to be hard to, to go in there. Counter Rita is there to help out Skarner. We do see Lyco coming in, so Mary may be looking to try to collapse. Although Lyco's going to get caught by Counter Rita, and Malphite's going to be there too. Two members of Marietta do kite for him and try to peel the ultimate. It does come out from the uh, Deathies though. And they're able to secure the kill onto Lyco. Relic and uh, I believe it was Miki and Relic peeled for Lyco, but it just was not enough. Yeah, they was able to. Skarner used the ulti to drag in Lyco. Malphite used the ulti to keep Lyco in there. And Katarina popped the ulti to finish him off. So it's just basically a triple ult whammy. And that's what we were talking before during Champion Select. Just kind of the, the, the engage composition that. Uh, that Muskingum has. If they get the the right engage first, they're gonna win the team fight every time. You see, Maxi looking to try to get the charm out, uh, but Relic is there for the counter engage. Does take down one, take down two. So the bot lane is down for Muskingum. So that's gonna give Marion a chance to get back in this game. That's a, that's exactly what they needed. Right, a nice team fight win. Double kill coming out from Relic. That that's exactly what they needed now the oh Ramlick almost gets caught channeling by the Katarina though he barely is able to get out in time yeah he does flash away Katarina was looking to pop the ulti to finish him off knowing that Ramlick was low but great situational awareness by Ramlick to get out of there oh, that's great this I guess this is a very Muskingum may be up by two Drake boons or buffs but it is it feels like an even match oh no wait just clear out this. Is roaming in the jungle. I don't think that Maxi knew sh she was there, but she's just going to back out. Where is this Katarina? Oh, she went back to the lane. Katarina just pushing the lane again, uh, using her advantages. Already has some completed items. Or at least one completed item. Seconds in the infernal Drake will be spawned in. Oh, Miyuki almost falls to the Katarina in the mid lane, but is able to flush out and live. Like I said, that Katarina is not afraid to go in for the kill. Now, Maria that don't, needs to have a good setup around this Drake, and they need to take it, or at least deny Muskingum from taking it for a while, because if Muskingum takes this Drake, it may be enough to push that slight edge over to having an advantage. Right now, both teams seem to be evenly matched. Although Muskingum pulls out the Rift Herald. They wanted to take this in for... Oh, uh, wait, they throw it down the mid lane. Yeah, so the, they the used... Distraction to get the Infernal Drake? Exactly. They used that to force Yuki to stay there to respond to the Infernal Drake. So it's like, do you give up Dragon or do you give up First Tower? This so... is such a big play from Muskingum. And they take all three drakes in the match so far and one minute uh two minutes remaining until the baron spawns they're gonna push a mid lane push with this buff Red does pop the ulti that force him to fall asleep and braum will go down teleport's gonna come down for lyco they're looking to try to take out the take out ash and they will do so now mary's gonna be forcing out katarina ult does come out but it does not get anyone down but does get the shutdown onto relic and Katarina's just going to be dashing around and doing all sorts of damage. Already a triple kill, quadra kill for Katarina. This is what makes Katarina so dangerous.
when you said 1v9, I thought you were joking, but what? No, I was not joking when I said that. Katarina can't 1v3. Look to be in favor of Muskingum. Muskingum did a really good kite through the jungle to get their CDs back. They lost two players in the process, but Katarina comes back with her ultimate and all three, four members of Marietta College. That a fight that looked to be in the favor of Marietta College was turned in an instant. And now, I mean, we still have the Muskingum, even though they did get a lot of kills there, they still don't seem to have that much of a gold lead at all. Just like a, a 9k gold lead, about. Not, not 9k, you mean like 900. Or 900, my bad. Yeah, I mean, if we take a look at gold differences here, I mean, the big thing is with the Katarina, already at 8700 gold, uh, but everything else is pretty even. Like, Brimstone is only down by about 100 gold. Relic is ahead by about 300 gold. Lyco is up by about... Uh, but like, if we just, also take a look at those stats, look at the members of Muskingum. They all have no kills except the Katarina. Right, so most of the gold is on Katarina. But, so if Marina shuts down the Katarina, then they can win the rest of it. But the problem is, Katarina can carry. And hard carry. Speaking of Katarina, she's coming into a sister team. And the bot lane to clean the fight has to retreat now. They probably could have forced, pushed that, taking the tower, but I don't think they had minions. So. Yeah, so Kennedy is going to try to get the dash in. Let me just see how dangerous that Katarina is. Getting a double kill. Is it too late to shut her down? It could be. In, in all she has it, 10 kills and probably is close to her, her full kit. Well, she's only got three items right now, but still. It's it's a lot. Has she completed her super item? Or yes. What is, okay. Yeah, the mythic item has been completed. So, oh, she, yeah, she definitely retreated back to spawn. She has more than enough gold to ramp up her kit at the moment, and that's only going to make her even stronger. Mary has to do something to shut her down every fight. Either focus her first every fight, kill her so they could win the fight, or it may be too late to shut her down. We will see. Muskingum currently has a 2k, just about 2k gold lead at the moment with five more kills. Both teams, however, have taken a tower. One minute remaining until the Inferno Trick spawns, but the Baron is on the map. At the moment, Muskingum doesn't need the Baron, but Marietta does. So if I were Muskingum, I wouldn't really necessarily play for Baron, but play to deny Marietta Baron. So Katarina's popping the ult. He does get the charm out. So this may be the engagement Mary needs. Braum is going to be using his ult to get the charm. Scar is going to be dragging in Maxi to pick her off. The so Mary is doing a lot of damage. Ash Arrow is going to catch Nar though. Katarina is going to get a double kill. So that's three damage. She's chasing. What was that? That was the blast cone that just allows you to kind of get a little hop, and sometimes that can be used to jump over distances. Like, Marriott is taking these engages, they're using their ultis, but the ultis from Muskingum just do more damage at the moment. And Miki comes, tries to come back into the mid lane, almost gets punished there, but four members of Muskingum are in the mid lane along with the Katarina, who is the most deadliest on the team right now. So you can see, she has 12 kills, and the, the Malphite has one. Now, you gotta kill that fight onto, an uh, early kill on that fight onto, I believe it was Maxi, I'm not sure though. But it feels like Marietta has good team fights. They have good ult usage in the team fight. But the thing is, they just not as evenly stacked is the Katarina exists. Right, yeah, that's the problem. The, the problem is the Katarina is so far ahead. I mean, it's it just, just so far ahead that if they don't shut down the Katarina instantly, they're going to lose the fight. 
So it's a matter of can Marietta find a way to lock down that Katarina? And they have ways to do it. They have two different charms. Yuki has a charm. Maxi has a charm. Rayla can put Katarina to sleep. Lyco can use the, the Meganar ulti to slam her to a wall and stun. So it's not like Marianne doesn't have the tools to do it. It's just a matter of can they find the opportunities because Muskingum has a way to counter engage. They have the Malphite ulti that can engage and knock everyone up. The Skarner ulti can pick someone, freeze him, and they can drag that person into the Muskingum's group and then they can just finish off that one person. Ash has an arrow to stop the engages. Braum has an ulti to be able to knock everyone up. So everyone from Muskingum has a way to counter Marietta's ability to shut down the Katarina. So it's like Muskingum's composition is the is protect the Katarina. And if they and they're doing that. Yeah, so with that, I mean. Because Kingdom is going to be able to take the Baron, I don't see how Merida can respond to it. Mount, uh, they're down four Drakes and Baron buff. They're down 6k gold lead now, two towers, and are down by 10 kills. This is not looking good for Merida at all. Yeah, they're trying to at least get a tower here, but yeah, it's just really hard to, to find the answers. They cannot 1v1 the, the Katarina. Yuki has to get out of there, but Mary has to find the picks from some of the other players to get back into the game. But when you're down already 6,000 gold, 25 and a half minutes in, it is just hard to, to do that. Alright, we are seeing uh, Skingham starting to, to collapse onto Marietta using that Baron buff to push all the lanes. They already got four towers down and they're putting pressure onto the inhibitor towers. And it just seems like there's not much Marietta can do to respond. We see three from Skingham going to try to get the jump onto Yuki. Has to use her ulti just to get away. The now, bot lane tower is now going to fall. Yes, Marietta is trying to push off the Baron powered in, uh, minions. Once again, Barry is trying to look for a pick, but Braum is there trying to protect. You see the charm coming out from Yuki to catch him, but it's not connecting. And we see Lyco trying to go in. He does have his, his, his ulti ready. Charm comes out, and two ultis come out from Marietta. So now they're working on trying to take everyone down. They get everyone low, but Lyco's going to fall. Yeah. Katarina was able to jump in the back lines, take out three from the Pioneers. Meanwhile, Ash is just splitting in the mid lane. And with Death Timers, I don't... That might be enough to finish the game, actually. Maybe. It looks as though they're going to take... Maybe go straight for the uh, Nexus turrets and get the Nexus? Yeah. Oh, I mean, no, they want to kill Relic out of spawn. I don't think they're going to kill him, but I don't think there's much left that Marietta can do. I do not think so either. 
It's like, like, like I said, Mary is doing really good in the team fights. We saw a lot get put out there. The ultimates were great. There's just not enough damage to clean up. I don't know if that's an, a compositional error, maybe a target focus error. Uh, they, like you saw three members of Muskingum with HP, but there wasn't any cleanup. No, that that was just all it was was Katarina was too far ahead. That that's really all it came down to. They they were so far ahead that there was nothing that Marietta could do to answer that. So I would expect on the next band phase, Katarina is probably one of those first ones banned because they can Marietta cannot allow this game to play Katarina again. Otherwise it that's it's GG. I would hope. I would hope that they ban the Katarina after what just happened. Still a winnable game though. Only 1-0 at the moment. Best of three series. It is match point for Muskingum, however. I think we're just getting everyone into uh, the lobby. And we'll have game two up very soon. So we might just take a... Yeah, Mary is in the lobby ready to go. I don't see Muskingum yet. So we're just going to take a, a small break uh, while we are waiting for game two to get set up. Uh, so we should, I mean, this may just be a, a 30 second break. It could be a two minute break, but we'll go ahead and take that break. And uh, when we come back, we will be at game two with Marietta versus Muskingum. and welcome back meet myself here uh we are getting things set up in the lobby for game two i get the audio and everything here set up so 
we should be getting ready. Muskingum is ready. So we'll see if Marietta is ready. All right, everyone is ready. So let's see what adjustments are going to be made by Marietta. I would expect that Katarina ban. That has to happen. I would too, but... Is that what Muskingum wants? They want them to ban the Katarina because they have something else planned? Or maybe we'll see what happens. If, if Marion doesn't ban Katarina, then Muskingum will take it and they just do the same thing as they did before. That They still ban out the Scion, and Rexar is being banned. Fine. They're going to ban out the Senna. I would expect the same bans from Muskingum. It's just now, are they going to. There's the Katarina ban. All right, that needed to happen. Now, will Maria still do the flex pick with the Seraphine, or maybe they'll try to do like Leona to give that to Maxi? I need you to share screen again. Oh, sorry. And they do first pick the Seraphine. There we go. And I think we're going to see a similar composition from Muskingum. We're seeing the Malphite and Brom come back out. In fact, they might just do the same thing as before, except just who is playing the, the mid lane. Or what's going to be the mid lane. So we're seeing Marietta going with the same jungle and top. So right. we... That's why I was like, I was feeling like the Katarina was really strong, but I don't know. Like, I feel like that. Muskingum has a plan around the Katarina being banned, and that's why they're running this comp. Well, they probably... It's probably one of those comps where they can make several mid laners work. Katarina may be the best choice, but they probably have a second choice for this composition as well. Maybe. And... We ban Vladimir. Yeah, they're going to focus in the mid lane, trying to take out any high carry mid laners. So that's a good choice to take out the Vladimir. They're not worried about the ADC. I think Brimstone did okay against uh, AC. Kai'Sa is going to be banned by Muskingum. Interesting choice there. But it does mean that Brimstone could do something like Misfortune or Jinx. Yeah, and taking out the Lux. So once again, just denying another option for the mid lane. So there's the Ash. So it's the same composition that Muskingum had before, it's just a matter of what mid-champion do they want to use as their carry. We'll see if Brimstone's still going to go with the Ezreal or if he's going to pick something else. And this time he's going to go with the Caitlyn. Okay, I haven't seen her since, like, last year when she was like meta caitlin's a good pick and that's going to be a nico mid so that's going to be seraphine support once again so who is musking i'm going to pick as their mid laner i mean there's still some good mid laners I mean, you can do like syndra for example or cassadin which has a very similar play style to katarina the ulti is a little uh -huh. bit different but it's yeah, it's a very similar play style. So yeah, that's that's gonna be a little rough. We haven't I haven't seen Castin for a couple seasons now. Well, maybe Muskingum has a plan to make it work. I'm sure they do. Yeah, same same comps except uh well mid lane for Muskingum and then Brimstone chose to go with the Caitlyn in the ADC. Um but other than that, same comps coming out from both sides. I feel like Marietta um, Marietta definitely can win this. Yeah, it's just it's going to come down to the, the cast in it again. So we saw how well Kale was able to play Katarina. 
can if he can do just as well in casting it and if he gets ahead then everyone else all they have to do is just engage and casting will do all the work I and mean, that if you look at malphite scarter ash and braum they all have some way of engaging and i think that's their strategy just have four ways to engage on the enemy team and let Kasdan do all the work. Yeah, that that sounds like about right. But yeah, while we're waiting, just as a couple of reminders once again. We have our team store that is now up. So you can get your hands on esports shirts or hoodies or hats or backpacks or even your very own Merity College jersey. You just have to make sure you go to the appropriate link. So the normal apparel is at bit.ly slash mcbsn2021. Or for your jersey, you can go to bit.ly slash mcjersey2021. Orders must be placed by March 15th. And a portion of each uh, item sold will go back into uh, the esports program. So it's only available for a limited time. If you're watching this live, you still have plenty of time to do it. If you're watching this on YouTube, you may only have a couple of days. So you do want to act now. The team store won't be up again until sometime next year. Uh, also, a reminder for our schedule, uh, for our back schedule, uh, the graphic here is not exactly correct. But our Rainbow Six team will be playing against Elon University in Collegiate R6. That will be tonight at eight o'clock. Uh, so you definitely want to come back to check out uh, that. Uh, check out that. Uh, right now, the Rainbow Six team is one and two in Collegiate R6, but we'll see if they can make it two and two uh, in the the competition. And then also, just as a reminder, uh, we are always looking for players for our esports program. So if you are a Meriden College student, please reach out to us because we have teams in League of Legends, Overwatch, Rocket League, Rainbow Six. Uh, we're, there's even been some discussion about trying to start up teams in Hearthstone or even Valorant. Uh, so we, we're definitely trying to work on expanding our programs. Uh, so if you're interested, reach out to us. If you're a high school senior, we do offer scholarships, um, but you have to do three steps. Step number one is to fill out our recruitment form, which is bit.ly slash mcrecruit. Step number two is you apply for admission. You can go to mbarriott.edu slash apply. And then finally, you can schedule a tryout, bit.ly slash mcesport tryout. Uh, we do have a shadow schedule for today, so it might be a little late to uh, participate in those. But we do have trial, another set of tryouts scheduled later on this month uh, during our Navy Blue and White Day. And we'll have at least one more tryout date set up in April. If those do not work for you, uh, we can try to schedule something outside of it, but we only have so many scholarships to offer, so uh, you do need to sign up for that sooner rather than later. But, all right, everything's getting loaded into the lobby here, so give me a second to get all the overlays uh, set up. It should be appearing here for you uh, very soon. All right, there we go. So game two of Marriott College versus Muskingum University. Marietta is still on the blue side. Muskingum is on the red side. But we'll see if Marietta can make some adjustments uh, with this matchup. Really, it's almost a similar composition. It is almost an identical composition for Muskingum except for the Cassidin. And then we're going to see Muki play Nico and Brimstone will be on the Caitlyn. We'll see if those changes uh, will affect the outcome of this game. We'll see. Maybe Marietta has come up in the break, come up with a different approach that they would like to try and see if it'll work better than their approach from last match. Map. Yeah, we, we are seeing a late invade by Marietta. Raylis is going to be taking their Raptors away, trying to deny some jungle uh, for. Uh, or def defies.
So that will slow him down a little bit. Now we're just about three minutes in the game. Nothing too major going on. Just waiting for junglers to get their levels up so that they'll be ready to try to do some gank attempts. Definitely a lot of the same stuff we've seen from last map. Just a lot of poke damage. Can't be getting rooted almost, or dropping down to about quarter or half HP in the mid lane. Not gonna get punished for it though. Lots we'll of poke damage getting put down on here as Dafis does come to assist in case that uh, KV was did in fact end up getting or following there. You're seeing Brimstone and actually doing a pretty good job pushing their, their lane and staying even on CS. But the challenge we're going to see is once again that Kassin. Kassin is as a substantial lead uh, on the CS compared to Yuki. And that's going to make him very scary as the, uh, as the game continues. Especially once he gets level 6 and he can start basically getting a free flash with his ulti. going to cause a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, still doing a good job controlling the mid lane. Has a higher CS than the Malphite at the current time, but if I'm Marietta, I wouldn't be too, too worried about your mid lane, or your, your top lane as much as your mid lane with the Kassadin being there. Right. Yeah, I mean, the, the strategy for Kingdom is we don't need to win off in bot lanes. They just need to be close because they're not going to be the carries. The carry is the Cassidy. So if they don't get too far behind, then all they have to do is just use their use an engage and let Cassidy do the work. And then have another person use an engage and a Cassidy does all the work. So it's really the pressure is on Cassidy to uh, get ahead to be able to do damage in the back lines. Great route there by Maxi. Uh, just to kind of slow things down in the, the bot lane for them. Doesn't do a whole lot, but... It's still something. Now we're seeing, it looks like Marietta is going to take a turn at the, uh, the Ocean Drake. Because Brimstone was able to push up the lane, they're going to have control of this Ocean Drake. So a nice little start there for Marietta. They should be able to get this without any contention. That they get that Ocean Drake. A much, much better start than to this map than they had from the last round. Let's see how they can use this uh, 
to their advantage now. Alright, so we're almost eight minutes into the game. Although, despite the fact that Marina did get the Ocean Drake, Muskingum has taken the gold lead, and that's just coming down to CS differences. So we're seeing that in the bot lane, uh, Fruit Vendor is getting ahead a little bit over Brimstone. We're seeing a 20 CS difference in the mid lane with Kale versus Yuki. And we're seeing the Defies being just slightly behind from Relic, so... Because of the big difference in the CS in the mid lane, Muskingum definitely does have the lead. Although Marietta is trying to close in that gap, so it's actually getting closer. But here comes the engage by the Ash. Here comes Skarner, going to flash and use the ulti to get Seraphine, going to get stunned in the process. And there's not much that Marietta can do. First Blood will go to Muskingum. That, oh, I, I, if I played League, I would hate that ultimate. He comes in, talks his ult, and you just b bring the person into your team and you yeah. kill them. Yeah. You blow them up. That's how it works. And Muskie is doing a really good job playing around that ulti as well. As the Cassidy didn't. Looks to clean up Muki probably in the mid lane. She is forced to retreat to her tower. Does survive for now. Cleaning them up. Yeah, that was a great Take ace. The bot lane. A great ace in the hole there by the Caitlyn to finish off uh, the Braum there. So that's going to give him at least a, a little bit of uh, power play. Not much though. Does widen the gold lead though? As Marietta does take the gold lead here by about yeah. 500, 600. And we have a minute remaining until the Mountain Drake spawns. Now, if we're musking them, we probably cannot afford to give up this Mountain Drake. At least without a fight, we can't. All right, we see, we saw there that Malphite went back to buy up at that point. That's just the indicator that he's getting stuff ready. He's not gonna use his teleport to get back in lane. He says he's gonna walk over. That way, if there's a fight over at the Dragon Pit, he can use his teleport to get in. Blyco's already burned his teleport. So that's already gonna get Muskingum a numbers advantage if there is a fight in there. We're already seeing that Skarner's put down a ward to catch if Marietta tries to go for the Mountain Drake as soon as it spawns. Marietta is trying to collapse onto the Cassidy, but he is going to flash away. 
Skarner was looking to use his ulti possibly, but now most of the Kingdom is getting into position. And the Malphite is going to get spotted out with the wards. I think we're going to start seeing a team fight here because Mountain Drake is up. And the Kingdom is in position. Definitely. In fact, they do start up the Mountain Drake. And there comes the Ash ulti. And there comes the ulti from Braum. There's all the ultis coming out for Muskingum trying to catch people. Although Skarner does end up going down. Yuki pops the ulti. That's two down from Muskingum. Three will fall as Brimstone cleans up the Malphite. And that's another Drake to the hands of Marietta. A very good strong start we're seeing from Marietta compared to last map as they go up two Drakes. And have a 3k gold lead. Yeah, we saw that the Kassanen couldn't do much. He already used his Flash early on, and he got poked down a bit, and he had to retreat. So while the rest of Muskingum was doing engages, Marietta was able to pick them off one by one because most of them weren't as far ahead. I mean, Marietta was ahead on CS or even for most of the respective counterparts, so they were able to, to win that fight. So it was basically a 4v5 in Marietta's favor. Yuki uh, may have overextended a little bit. They're trying to get Yuki down. Already burned a flash and will get the shutdown. And giving that to Kassanen is very dangerous because that's going to be some extra gold uh, going to him. Oh, the the Kassanen does not have that many kills. as we, we see that Katarina last map, the Katarina already would have had like two or three kills. But we're, first off, we're seeing a fight here as... Grimsel bro pops the ultimate, kill, ends up cleaning up the Braum. The Ash forced to retreat back to her tower as three all three members of Merida, they pushed that bot lane. But yeah. like I was saying, the Katarina would have had like six or so kills by now, maybe even ten. I, if I, uh, I don't remember very fondly. But, and the, the Cassadine only has one, so Merida is doing a pretty good job shutting down those kills from the Cassadine. Yeah, Kazan is not at is it's a similar play style to Katarina, but not exactly. And what the big difference is Kazan has to use his ulti to kind of teleport to different places to get that same benefit that uh, Katarina has. But the catch is every time you use it in succession, it costs more mana to do so. So it's not like you can just infinitely uh, teleport in and out everywhere. So if he does that a lot, he's not gonna have any mana to do anything else. Yeah, Marion does have a much better lead uh, than before. And we're seeing that Skarner ulti coming in, trying to get something fed for Kassadin. Yuki uses the ult to kind of just make her untargetable and gets away from the, uh, the engage. Now we're seeing Lyka Relic uh, heading towards the top lane. Skarner is looking for a possible uh, pick there, but here comes Yuki as well. And we're gonna see Marina trying to get onto this Kassadin, but here comes Malphite with the engage and is going to block up Lyco. So with that, Muskingum is working their way back into this game. Uh, now we have less than a 3k gold difference between the two teams. I mean, it's still a good lead for Marietta, but if they give away a couple more kills like that, Muskingum will get right back into this. A minute 30 until the next Drake spawns. Muskingum want this Drake. Yeah, having Cloud Drake up, having the uh, the movement speed, the cooldown reduction, that's definitely helpful for the engage heavy composition that Muskingum is going with. But Marietta does have some wards there. I expect him to go back soon to buy up and get ready for this next team fight. Brimstone being at 401 is very nice, so he's already pretty pretty far ahead. So I think he's gonna be the main character for the team. And now we're seeing the sleep coming out. Oh no, it wasn't the sleep, sorry, but 
Okay, Red was looking for a possible engage in there, forcing the flash from the from that ash. That's gonna be useful in the upcoming team fight on the uh, for Cloud Drake. Kingdom is going to start off the Cloud Drake, and Marion is not really in position. The teleport is coming in for Lyco, trying to get the charm. It does connect with two, although we can see the Brawl getting the engage. And one is down for Miss Kingdom, and the second one's going to fall, so that's two already down in favor of Marietta. So they're going to drive out the rest of Miss Kingdom. They're having to back out, and Marietta will take this Cloud Drake. The charm looking like it wasn't gonna connect. Almost, Rusty, I'm almost dodging it, but it does connect with one, and maybe that's like, okay, we got the charm, it's go time. Yeah, and then Lyco actually leaps in behind the scenes and gets some damage behind Braum. Braum put the shield up, but that damage reduction is only from the front, not from the back. It's like a Reinhardt shield, so got to the back line to take him out, and that was huge for Marietta. With that, Mariana secures two towers, and they expand their goalie by almost 5,000 at 18 and a half minutes in. So this is looking much better for Marietta. What a cool channel. There are some really awesome animations. Yeah. Like I said, I feel like Marietta... Maybe Kate, maybe Caitlyn was the the pick they decided to go with over. I forgot what they ran out last time. Oh, uh, no, I, yeah, I forgot. They what used, they they used ran Ezreal. Out oh, Ezreal. I, I don't know. Maybe that's a coaching decision. As Lyco should fall his three members of Muskie have come, and and if I'm Lyco, I'm just like. I mean, you take those, I guess. Four people have to come kill you? I mean... Yeah, it's a compliment. It's just saying they, they recognize him as a threat. It's like, okay, we gotta bring in so many people to take him down. And he still did massive damage using the... Going into Meganar, popping the ulti. Although, here comes the Skarner ulti, picking out Raelic. He's gonna end up going down. That was a nice shield from the Braum to try and deny any type of killing or support onto Relic once they dragged him in. But the Braum does drop to when he's being made. It probably should not chase this, but... Well, they... I see him trying desperately to, to get kills, to flip a, uh, flip the gold lead, to give them some type of advantage. But Marietta's running it down the mid lane now, nearly taking that mid lane turret. But Muskim does come back from spawn, and the Casadina is booking it down main. Yeah, actually even uses one uh, of his ultis just to try to charge in and look for an engage. But Brimstone there, able to get in a kill. So while it was a 2v1 overall, Mariel at least was able to get a kill in there to help reduce the uh, the out or, or change the, the outcome a little bit. If we do go to a game three, I do expect Muskinga to ban that Caitlyn. I would not be surprised one bit. Assume so too. Uh, the the Caitlyn seems to work better than the Ezreal. I don't know if it's maybe because the Caitlyn can clean up better than Ezreal could in the comp. But I don't know if that was a coaching decision. But the, this comp and Marietta's like game plan seems to be working out much better than it did last map. Well, I mean, in game one, the composition was fine. It, it's it's not that there was any major problems. It's just they let Caitlyn get a, get ahead and Caitlyn just carried the the entire game. Now, Mary is using a similar composition as before, except maybe using the Caitlyn instead of the Ezreal. And it's working because they, they're keeping Caitlyn check. His own, now, he's at 301, so it still can be scary. Has uh, three completed items. But 
it's still very it's a lot more manageable than like the 12 something that uh, Katarina was at this point or even more than that a minute until the next cloud jake spawns but yeah. baron is on the field probably gonna be a little early to go for baron unless marietta gets like a huge team win you seen i don't think either team Ooh, really gets found out in the jungle but i don't think either team is going for baron it is on the field so we have to be wary of it I don't think that Muskium is in a place to take this Baron unless they take this Drake. Even then, if they take the Drake, it's not take the Baron. But like Baron is just trying to get the uh, that outer tower, so now they're going to rotate towards mid. Yeah, so they're just going to rotate towards mid and get ready for the Cloud Drake fight, which is, I mean, it's up in 30 seconds. So we see Muskium is already in position, Marietta's working their way. Skarner has been pointed out. So it's a matter of can Mary to get the jump onto Muskingum. Muskingum is starting to fall back, so they're they're having their respect the fact that Marietta is ahead. Well, I think that they're trying to poke wait for that one okay, they're waiting for their one player to come, Muskingum. So they have full five. Then they're also waiting for that one player to overextend a tiny bit so they can catch him out with the Skarnel and drag him in. But they're trying to prevent them. They're trying to avoid that. And they gotta make sure they're not grouped up either because, I mean, Malphite has his ulti. He can go in there and try to knock up people. And as soon as that happens, Skarner's gonna try to go in and drag someone from that knockup away. The team's kind of just at a stalemate at the moment. Oh, it's just a matter of waiting for it. There comes the Malphite ulti. And there goes the Ash Arrow. Charm's gonna be coming out. Miyuki's gonna pop the ulti. One's down, two down, three's already down for Muskingum. Three. That and is a almost team wipe coming out on the side of Marietta, but the Casadina is able to retreat. Not doing as much damage as you were on Katarina. Marietta secures the Drake, and they may be going straight for. Yeah, they're pinging Baron. They're gonna. Yeah, I would be definitely pinging Baron. You just team wiped Muskingum. Of those death counters, how are they gonna stop you? They'll respawn by the time Marietta gets started on it. So I think they'll start the Baron, but be ready to peel if Muskingum starts coming in. They just have to be careful. He's a little low on health, but he's trying to get himself back up. Here comes Cassidy, maybe looking, trying to get a possible steal here, but Baron's very low. Baron is secured by Marietta, and they secure the kill onto Cassidy as well. That's what I'm predicting. They'll probably at least do two lanes with the Baron buff. See, Lyco's gonna go straight to the bot lane and, and start pushing that way. Meanwhile, the rest of Marietta should be splitting, uh, especially in the mid lane. Because that mid lane uh, inner tower is already low. Now, Marietta close to having a 10k gold lead with what looks to be like they look to be like close to finishing this map. Right, so Brom taking some damage and some poke. Yuki looking for a possible rouge, but it's not going to happen. Scarner, meanwhile, is in the back line. He may be looking to get a pick, like try to flash through. No, I don't. It'd be very gutsy to try to flash through and, and grab someone. The tower is secured there by Marietta. Well, Lyco is going to continue pushing. You see another tower from a King of Falling. So Marion is up five to zero towers. Now we have we're about a nine point five k gold difference. Uh, between the teams So right now it is Marietta's game to win or lose technically You know, 
we see that split pushing going on. And both the inhibitor towers are very low. One inhibitor tower has fallen. So will Marietta try to take out this inhibitor? I think they're going to continue to push. They have two Baron and Tower Cannon minions. And there goes the other inhibitor tower. And Marietta does secure the inhibitor. So I think they're going to just rotate the bot lane and see if they can secure two inhibitors. The minion. Sometimes we call those the Winions. And the minions are just doing so much damage to the inhibitors. I, I think they have super minions too. Well, now they will get super minions. They, now, super minions don't get Baron empowered. They're already powerful yeah, that, as that is. That would be OP. Yeah. But with two super uh, two inhibitors down, that's going to put some pressure on the Muskinga because now they have to deal with both those lanes with super minions. Right. And it's the mid in the bot lane. And with that, Marietta has crossed over the 10,000 gold lead over Muskingum. So it's just a matter of can they close this out. No, no major objectives will be up for another over two minutes. Elder Drake's going to be up in a little over two minutes. Baron is going to be about two minutes and 40 seconds. So I think all they can do right now is just get some vision set up and just continue that pressure in the mid lane. I wonder what Marius' plan here is. Are they going to try and move? Are they going to try and finish the map here, or are they going to try and move to deny the Cloud Drake or the 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 Drake? They're setting up for for Elder Drake. It's up in 50 seconds. They're trying to keep the bot and mid lanes pressured, so that Muskinga can't even contest the Elder Drake. And then from there, if they can take Elder Drake, I would expect them to then go straight for Baron again. Because if you have elder, if you have four dra a four dragon soul elder drake plus baron buff, I mean you're in super saiyan ultra instinct mode there. <laughs> so yeah, that's Marietta's play right now. They're just pushing uh, both the lanes. Might be looking to get a uh, catch onto Skarner. And Skarner is getting poked down pretty hard. Kastin is trying to jump in, looking for a possible thing. The charm is going to come out, but Skarner is going to pick off Maxi. Ace of the Hole is going to come out. And now we're seeing Miskinga getting the engage that they wanted, taking out four of the Pioneers. And it's just Lyco that's left. Lyco does use the ulti to try to get away, but Muskinga will win that fight. It all started off. Yeah, they will get it. They don't have any Dragon Souls, but it will still deny the Elder Drake for Marietta. Is this enough to turn the match, though? It could. I mean, Marietta is still going to have a pretty large gold difference, but the way Muskingum executed that fight was pretty good. They used all their engages. They picked off the squishiest player from the team. And Marietta was not... It, Brimstone tried to get some picks off, but the rest of the tanks were able to body block, so they didn't get any kills for that. So now we're seeing that gold difference is diminished by just a little over 5,000 with just one team fight in Elder Drake. So Marietta's going to have to be careful. They're ahead, but they can't have another team fight like that.
And with inhibitors respawning, that's going to alleviate some of the pressure uh, from Muskingum. That's going to allow them to try to work on the uh, the Baron. Now we're seeing the root coming out onto the Brom. Not going to do a whole lot. Meanwhile, Ash is looking for an engage. Does catch Muki. The charm's going to catch two, though. But just no follow-up from Marietta. Ace and Hole's going to come out. Body blocked by Malphite. Yeah, we're seeing... Skinga may be looking for a potential jump onto Brimson. Has to flash away to avoid the ulti. Is going to use the ulti onto Maxi. Once again, gets picked off. And that's exactly what Muskingum wants. Now it's a 5v4. And they're going to go straight for Baron with that pick. Yeah. yeah Muskingum doing a really good job not giving up in this match. They, they are, the way they're playing, they're closing the lead. Slowly but surely, they may not have all the Jake buffs, but they're, they're playing as though like it just doesn't matter. But Marietta, they, okay, Muskingum's members are all really weak. Marietta can potentially take a fight, and then no, they can't actually. Yeah, Muskingum does secure the Baron. Ace and Hold does come out to try to get some damage, but not much follow up. Although, Lyco's gonna get two from his ulti stun. And Ash does end up going down from a skin. So that's one down. Marietta may be looking for more. Gonna see if they can try to catch Malphite. Has to use his ulti to get away. And Marietta's gonna try to get a catch onto. Yeah, Brimstone will get the shutdown onto the Cassidin. Uses the Zanya Hourglass to kind of delay the inevitable. So with two down for Muskingum, that's Marietta's chance to push onto the inhibitor. And they may, they may close out the uh, try to game. So even though Muskingum got the Elder Drake and got the Baron, Marietta is still in the lead and they're going to try to use that lead to take out inhibitors. There's one inhibitor down. It all came down to that, the fight before. With all the members of uh, Muskingum were low HP, they did get a pick, but they went to go fight the Baron while they were all low HP. Knowing that after they got Baron Buff, Marietta took advantage and cleaned up those members. I do see Marietta is backing out. So, I mean, they got what they wanted. They want to get the inhibitors down to put more pressure onto Muskingum. But Skarner has his ulti. He's looking to try to catch someone. Because that's how Muskingum has been winning the last couple of fights. Skarner gets the ulti onto Maxi. Lures, drags her into the team. And then she goes down and... That's how Muskingum wins. So they gotta make sure that Skarner does not get onto Maxi. This is a really close... A game that doesn't seem like it'd be close based on how Marietta came out, but Muskingum has done a really good job of staying in the fight. But Marietta, I think they're done playing games. They wanna, they wanna end it here, maybe. Or maybe go for the Elder Drake? Well, Elder Drake's not going to be up for a minute 20. So, I mean, they are trying to clear things up and get get things set up. But they have to find a way to get an early pick. And be mindful of this next team fight. This next team fight may end up deciding who wins the game. Because, I mean, we're at 30 or 35 minutes, almost 36 minutes. Death timers are getting very long. You get uh, just a couple people down, that's going to be enough to take Elder Drake and maybe even Nexus Towers in the Nexus itself. Mary desperately wants to win this fight. You see, the Fize... Almost running into the members of Muskingum there. Yeah, the Fies is looking to catch someone. They're looking for the Seraphine. That's what they want. You see, Brimstone putting down... Some... Yeah, Brimstone's putting down some traps, so if Muskingum tries to engage there, they're going to get caught in the trap. Now, Muskingum can't destroy those traps, can they? I don't think so. Uh, 
Mel Elder Drake's in 15 seconds. There he is, trying to get some poke in. And great choice here, they popped the Blast Cone, which could have allowed Skarner to go in for the engage. But yeah, now those traps are starting to despawn, so it's going to allow... Oh, and they got they caught the Skarner! Skarner does pop the ulti, but he has to flash away. He ends up going down to Rayleigh. He pops the ulti. Although Cassin's going to take down Brimstone, where most of the damage was for the team. So Mary's got to... ...ball here as well, and Muskingum looks to be winning this fight. The Cassidyne wants to clean up these two members of Merida, but they should just... ...be the Elder Jake. It's but... not over yet. Most Kingdom is no. very low, and they're going to start up Elder Drake, and that might give Mary a chance to collapse. Yuki does get a root onto Malphite, so this may be Marion's chance to try to go something, but they're just going to respect the numbers. And no, I think they're forcing... They forced Muskeen to retreat, so now they're going to take a shot at the uh, Elder Drake. I think they might even just take it here. Well, they're going to have to, because guess what? There are super minions on the Nexus Towers. Muskingum has to go respond to that. Teleport is coming in, though. They stop. Yeah, they saw the teleport coming in, so they retreated. The Malphite te mm -hmm. teleported in. Yeah, so it just kind of reset there. But now Barry is going to re engage onto the Elder Drake. But Malphite and Cassandra are there. Grimstone's trying to put the traps down once again. Cassandra is trying to. Move in. This is this is very close. We may be seeing that engage that everyone wants. Here comes the ulti. Marietta secures the Elder Drake. And that's two down for Muskinga. Three down. And Mary's gonna go straight for the Nexus. This could be GG's 40 minute map. Close fight on both sides. You cannot say it was not close as Muskingum almost turned this over and over and over again. Yeah, that could have gone either way. Like if they if they stole the mountain, the uh, Elder Drake, and maybe they'll get a pick some themselves, they might have taken this. But with that said, Marianna does secure the Nexus, which means we are gonna go to a game three, folks. Wow. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get things set up for that because I'm sure they're ready and waiting for us. So I'm going to take a very small break. And once we get game three ready, we will get that to you. So we'll be back in just a minute.
All right, and welcome back. Uh, we are getting things set up in the lobby, so we should have a uh, game three to you very soon. Uh, it's looking like Muskingo is going to be on the blue side this time, and Marietta has chosen the red side. So once we get the uh, the ready checks, uh, we will get game three underway. So I would still expect the uh, the Cassidy be uh, I'm sorry, Cassidy, the Katarina being banned, and I wouldn't be surprised if Muskingo decided to ban uh, the Caitlyn. From Brimstone, but we'll see. Everyone is in the lobby. Now I'm just waiting for everyone to be ready. There comes the ready checks. Everyone seems to be ready, and here we go, folks. So this is it. Match point. Winner takes it all. So let's see what Miss Kinga will ban first. You're still going to see the Rek'Sai being banned. That There's that Katarina ban. I expect that to happen. Come on. There's the Olaf ban by Muskingo. Santa's being banned by Mariana still. And it looks like Muskingo's gonna ban out the Nart. Uh, Lyco's been having a really good day on that Nart. And Marianna's gonna take out the Hecarim this time. Interesting choice. Halen's still up, so Marianna could take that if they wanted to. So we'll see if Muskingo goes with a similar composition as before, or if they're gonna try to change things up. There's the Malphite once again. So what will Marietta do to respond? Maybe go with a Renekton, possibly? Uh, maybe Orn? We'll see what they decide. And I would expect them to stay on the Lilia for jungle. But now they're going to flex pick the uh, Seraphine once again. And the Lilia. So we'll see what kind of composition is Muskingo going to be going with. Is it going to be the same as before or something different? They're, looks like they're going to stick with the Ash. So, so far Muskingo is going with the same composition as before. So what will Marietta go with here? Will they go ahead and pick uh, the Caitlyn again, or will they pick something for Lyco in the top lane? They're thinking about the, the, that Caitlyn. And no, they actually swapped to the Kai'Sa for Brimstone. That was banned in the last game. So Kaiza could be a big threat to get into the back lines for Muskingum. Now we'll see what Muskingum wants to target ban. I'm sorry, Marietta wants to target ban. They're going to still focus on that mid laner. Vladimir is, another, is still a very scary uh, champion, so we don't want any of that. We're going to see the Scion being banned in the top lane. You know, Lyco doesn't really play that a lot. And this time they're going to take out the Orianna from, uh, from Kale. Or what did they ban last time? Oh no, it was the Katarina. Oh no, it was something I can't remember at this point. And it looks like uh, Muskingo's strategy is to deny options from uh, from Lyco.
Marion is, is thinking about that Nico going picking that blind. But no, they're gonna go with the Silas instead. Ooh, this is interesting. That Silas can be flexed. That could be a top Silas, it could be a mid Silas. Plus Kingdom isn't gonna know until the very end. Oh yeah, the cane was uh, not banned this time, so uh, we may see defies on the, the cane. It would be very scary in the jungle. But now, what will they go with the cast in the mid lane again? I don't think the cast it was as effective uh, this time, so they may try a different mid laner. Okay, so we're gonna see the Vigar coming out. A uh, very annoying champion to go up against. And one of those that can also scale and get very scary. I know Barry has played against the Vigar a couple times in other games. And if you don't shut down the Vigar, you can start one-shotting people. So how will Marietta respond to that? They only got a couple seconds left to make their pick. All right, so they're going to play the Nico into the Vigar, and that's going to be a Silas top. Either way... Silas being able to steal several of the ultis from Muskinga is going to be scary. All right, so just look for one, one more swap. There we go. All right, so now we just got to wait for the spectator delay. And we will uh, get this last game uh, for you. So as a reminder, uh, we will have more esports for you later tonight. Our Rainbow Six team will be going up against uh, Elon University and Collegiate R6. So that's 8 o'clock tonight. So please be sure to come back to check that out. Uh, also, I'm noticing here that... We got lot, quite a few people watching, so thank you for watching. And we are at 396 followers. That is amazing. So the real question is, can we hit 400 uh, before the end of this game? That would be awesome to say that we have 400 followers for our Twitch channel. That's It's quite humbling that uh, so many of you uh, are supporting the program. So we thank you so much for uh, being here and watching some very exciting matches that we've had. Um, Marietta went against Muskinga Rocket League earlier uh, and took the series 3-1. to one, But with some very close matches there, our Overwatch team, they went up against a very good uh, Trine University. There's a reason why Trine won the conference championship last semester. And now we're at a winner-take-all in this uh, League of Legends match between Marietta and Muskinga. It's only fitting since Marietta and Muskinga are OAC rivals. So we have that going on. And once again, I have to remind everyone that we have our team shop up and running. That's right. We have t-shirts. We have long sleeve shirts. We got hoodies. We got the hoodies that have like the, the little white sleeve on the side, whether it's in blue or gray. Which I think it looks awesome. We have backpacks. We have hats. You can even get your own Marietta Esport jersey. Your very own. Now that's a separate store. So if you're looking to get like shirts and hoodies and so forth, you want to go to bit.ly slash mcbsn2021. Uh, if you want the jersey is a separate store, you do have to pay separate shipping for that, unfortunately. But that is bit.ly slash mcjersey2021. We only have this up for a limited time. So if you are watching this live, then you have until March, you have until March 15th to place your order. So if you're watching it live, you still have a little over a week to complete it. If you're watching this on YouTube though, depending on when I get this up on YouTube, you only have a matter of days. So you want to get your orders in. So what happens is you place the order, but it doesn't get shipped out, doesn't get processed and shipped out until after March 15th. And we do need a minimum number of orders to actually have the uh, the sales. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to uh, get that in, but, and also a portion of each item sold not just each sale but each item sold 
will go directly to the esports program. So uh, this is a great way to get some really cool stuff, but you also able to support the esports program at the same time. So once again, that is bit.ly slash mcbsn2021 and bit.ly slash mcjersey2021. The letters are case sensitive, so they are capitalized. All right, we are getting things underway with our match here. Spectator delay has finished. So now it's just a matter of getting everything loaded and we will get this game three uh, to you in just a matter of seconds. So once we get this, we will get uh, everything underway to you. Uh, if you were wondering, uh, Azadeh was not able to continue helping with commentating. Uh, he and some of the Overwatch players are participating in a community tournament. So they are getting ready for that. I heard it's a GOATS tournament. So when you have a chance to play GOATS, you got to go play GOATS. But all right, we're getting things here set up. So let me just get the overlay ready to go. Get audio set up. All right, folks. Here we go. Game three. Marietta College versus Muskingum University. Muskingum this time is on the blue side and Marietta is on the red side. So once again, we're seeing a very similar composition from Muskingum. Very he uh, engage heavy. But now they're going to use the Vigar to try to carry in the mid lane and using the Cane to be more aggressive in the jungle. Meanwhile, Marietta is using a similar composition from before, except now Brimstone gets to be on that Kaiza who wasn't banned. And Lyco is going to be on the, uh, the Silas to see if he can steal some engage ulties from Muskingum. Yeah, we're going to see the typical uh, five point uh, layout here. No invades yet. The pinging going on over at the, the pixel brush. But all right, so it looks like Muskinga will start on the red side. Are we going to see another late invade by Rayleigh trying to deny some jungle uh, from uh, Defies? No, we will not see that this time. Instead, Rayleigh's going to be starting with his Raptors, and I'm going to guess he's going to rotate up to that red buff. Although, this is pretty sneaky what Marietta just did. So, they delayed going into lane. Making Muskingum think that Raelic started with his blue buff. When actually he didn't. He started with his red buff. Actually he started with Raptors, then going to red buff. So right now Muskingum is thinking, oh, Raelic's in their blue jungle clearing out wolves and grumps and so forth. But no, he's already in position for a possible gank. Or maybe even looking to do some counter jungling. And he's going to get spotted taking away the blue buff from Kane. You know, Brimstone's going to be doing some poking. And Braum's going to get rooted. Has to pop the shield. But he will stay alive. And Fruit Vendor Army had to pop the heal to keep uh, Braum alive there. And Raelic will stay away the blue buff. But Raelic did take a lot of hits to take that blue buff. He was going to rotate around in the, the red jungle. Meanwhile, Kane is going to be taking the blue buff. But... He's going to get spotted. Marietta knows that's where he has to go. And we're going to see Marietta collapsing onto him. I can be good if I... Well, I didn't get a chance to see what happened there. My bad. But it looks like uh, Kane did flash away. So he does take blue buff, but had to burn his flash. Just to avoid getting collapsed on by the rest of the Pioneers. So Marietta's playing the mind games here. Maybe a little 4D chess going on. You know, we're seeing another possible collapse in the top river. The gate does come out onto Kale, but the hook's going to come in by Silas, but the first blood is going to go to Muskinga. Marietta overstepped their aggression a little bit. So they have to be careful not to get greedy on the, the kills. And that's going to give uh, Kale, I should say technically Vigar, 
uh, a little extra AP for getting the, the kill there. We're seeing Rayleigh Kang straight for the Infernal Drake. It's going to be up in 50 seconds. Right now, Muskingo does have a slight lead because just because of the first kill, uh, first blood bonus. But we're also seeing Vygar's doing better on CS than Yuki. Uh, and even uh, Snarky Pickles is doing better than Lyco on the CS with the uh, Malphite versus the, uh, the Silas. see some pinks going on in the the bottom river I mean Arena does have a couple of wards so does Muskingo so if anyone tries to go down there they will be aware of it you know do see Vyra working on trying to build up his AP and that's gonna get him scary in the late game Mariana cannot afford to get into the late game they have to win this early He'll continue to farm. In fact, if we were to check on his AP right now, already at 101 at six minutes in, that's going to be very scary later on. And it looks like uh, Defiance was maybe hoping for an engage. The stun does come out, and Yuki ends up having to use the flash to avoid getting hit by Vygar. Meanwhile, Lyco is looking to get a little engage onto Malphite. And Lyco's going to use the ulti to charge into Malphite, has to burn the flash, and also flashes and gets the kill onto the Malphite. So both flashes being used there, but a great job by Lyco to get that kill. Okay, seven minutes in, and right now the goal difference is very close. We're only talking about a 200 goal difference between the, the two teams. So I think that really just attributes to some CS differentials and the uh, first uh, blood bonus. So nice route there by uh, Maxi to... And it's looking like Muskinga may be rotating towards the Infernal Drake. Area has to be aware of this. We're seeing uh, Vigar heading down there. And with Raelic on the other side of the jungle, I don't think there's much that Marietta can do. So this should be a free dragon for Muskinga. And with it being Infernal, that's going to be a, a little scary. Just that extra damage that they'll be putting out. Malphite is going to have to burn his ulti just to get away, but Rayleigh uses the, his ulti to keep him to sleep, and Rayleigh's going to get the kill onto the Malphite.
Looks like Hale is, I'm sorry, not Hale, but Kane is looking to find Relic, knowing that Relic does have some hits on him, but, but Nico is going to try to poke down uh, Kane. And we're seeing a little bit of training, uh, changing going on in the bottom lane. Brimstone is slightly ahead on CS. Meanwhile, we are seeing some harassment in the jungle for uh, Muskingo. Dookie's going to pop the ulti and try to get some damage onto Kane. He's going to use his ulti. Meanwhile, Lyco's going to pop and use his ulti to catch uh, some ultis. But so far, it's a one for one uh, in that lane. So Defies does take out Yuki, but Relic is able to take out the Kane. And Silas just kind of zones out. Uh, Vigar forcing him to use his flash to stay alive. And we see the Ash Air engage. A great charm there by Maxi, but uses the ulti to get onto Brimstone. Has to flash away. Brimstone's very low on health and ends up falling to a, a tick by uh, the Braum. Using, yeah, we're seeing Night Ticks that was finished him off. So right now, this is still very even. I mean, in fact, they have 15,000 gold each at this point in the game. It doesn't get any closer than this, folks. seeing yeah we saw the engage there by Mira to take out the Vigar but the ulti by Vigar was able to take out Relic Yuki tried to pop the ulti to uh, take him down but just not enough damage and that's going to be a shutdown onto him that's going to make him scary so now he's at 206 uh, AP Once again, we're, we're going to start seeing this uh, Vigar getting very, very powerful. Merida's going to have to respect that. So with that shutdown, Muskingum's now ahead in gold. See the Ash Arrow engage onto Brimstone once again. And Brimstone and Brahma's going to pop the ulti. Brimstone is going to be very low. Ends up going down. And that's going to be another kill for Muskingum. Marriott is starting to let this game slip away. Muskingum is ahead by almost a thousand gold now. And it seems to be the plan is just try to shut down Relic and Brimstone. Alright, Mountain Drake is up and everyone's starting to converge over there. So I think we're going to start seeing a team fight here very soon. Muskingum has most of their ultimates online, just waiting for the Braum ultimate to kick in. And I think once it kicks in, we're going to see that engage. Although Silas has the uh, Malphite ulti ready to go for an engage in the back line if needed. Mountain Drake has kind of started up. Oh 
Marina is trying to zone out. It's a root onto the cane, and there comes the Alpha ulti by Lyco. That's one down, two down for Marietta. They're trying to take out oh, Yuki gets up going down, but Malphite for Muskingum has fallen. They're trying to get onto the Vigar. He's going to fall, so that's four down for Muskingum. Brimstone getting the shutdown. And Marietta will secure this Mountain Drake with four kills to one. Ruvenor Army is still there. Trying to harass, but I don't think there's much it can do. And Marietta secures the Mountain Drake. That was a much needed fight that Marietta needed. But with that, they're only up by 600 gold. So this is still a very close matchup. We're seeing Lyco getting some damage onto the Malphite. The Barry is worth on trying to be the lead up, but Muskingum is now ahead in gold. And it's coming down to the CS differences. So we are seeing Kane looking to try to get onto Brimstone. We see flashes coming out. Kane ult is gonna come out and takes out Maxi. And meanwhile, Vigar is gonna take out uh Raelic in the mid lane. So with that, Muskingum has taken the lead again. If we check on the Vigar again, so Vigar is at 260 uh, AP. So as I mentioned before, it's just going to be quite scary. As the game progresses, Vigar is going to get stronger and stronger. And the first turret gold bonus is now going to go to Muskingum. That's going to send her lead by almost 2,000 gold. Vigar is going to use the Malphite ulti to get the engage and Teleport's going to come out for Vigar hoping to catch Lyco, but he's going to dash away. Looks like Muskingum is going to be working with Rift Herald, and they should be able to get this uncontested. There's not really any vision on Marietta's over for Marietta over by the, the Rift Herald. Lyco may be looking, but he's got to be careful. He doesn't want to face check that. He's just going to know that Muskingum will secure it. But right now, Ocean Drake's going to be up in 55 seconds. And meanwhile, Muskingum is hoping to catch Lyco. He's going to try to get out. Flashes away from the gate. And he should not try to re-engage, or that will happen. Meanwhile, Mary is going to try to push some towers, knowing that most of Muskingum was putting their resources uh, into Lyco. 
But now we're going to see the engage by Muskinga. The charm's going to come out for Yuki, but she's going to get picked off. So that's two down for Marietta. Yuki will take out the uh, the tower in the bot lane. But now Muskinga's going to work on the mid tower on Marietta's side. Meanwhile, Marietta may try to start up the Ocean Drake since they're all there. But Muskinga's going to use the, the uh, Rift Herald to put more pressure in the mid lane. So now Marietta's going to look to flank from behind. And we're seeing that Kane was able to get the jump onto Kaisa. It's a one for one trade though, but Malphite's going to get the uh, ulti off. So three for the Pioneers have fallen. Yuki's going to use her ult to try to catch anyone, not going to connect. So it's just Yuki and Maxi is all that's left for Marietta. And Muskingum is taking the lead in these fights. And now they're going to go straight for the Ocean Drake. Alright, we are at over 21 minutes in the game. Muskingum is up uh, by almost 3,000 gold. We are seeing they're trying to establish some vision around the Baron. Muskingo trying to get the jump onto Lyco using his ulti. But Brimstone's going to take out the cane, but it's a one for one trade. Most of Mary is caught in Vigar's gate. The Brom ulti is going to come out. Nico's going to try to catch uh, Malphite. Kale's going to be using the Zonyas to stay alive. And right now it's a two for three in favor of Muskingo. Although Marietta's looking to try to get the re engage. So technically Muskingum won the fight, but most of them are so low that they cannot continue. And Marietta will get the tower. So it kind of evens out. Now we're seeing Muskingo trying to get the jump onto Brimstone. Kane pops the ulti, does take him out. Yeah, so we're seeing Kane at 4, 4, and 5. And he's basically looking to try to pick off any one person he wants. Combo that with Vigar's ulti. They can just pick one person and just instantly delete them. And that's going to allow Muskingo to start up the Baron.
and Marianne actually steals the Baron buff. Charm's gonna come out, three are uh, falling asleep. This may be Marianne's chance to get back into the game. Although Lyco does get taken out. But we are seeing Marianne turning this around, taking out three of the Muskies. Seraphine with a double kill. Brimstone working on Vigar. Doesn't have the flash ready, but does end up taking him down. So that's a four for one plus Baron. Marietta is back in this game, folks. Oh my goodness. And that just came down with the Baron steal. If Marietta, if Rayla did not get that Baron steal, then it would have been a disaster for Marietta. But that was so clutch. Being able to get the sleep off at the same time and then just be able to hold on and be able to push the damage out. So now Mary's going to look to see if they can push the uh, the tower here and see if they can use this bear buff to expand the lead. Ocean Drake is up in five seconds. So we do see Marietta starting to retreat over there. Kane is looking for a pick. Not going to get it just yet. Now, Marietta is ahead in gold, but not by much. Kanan's trying to get some damage off. Vigar is going to be coming in. Relic is working to try to sleep. Vigar, he does, is, a, is slept, and he's down. Kane is going to take down two, though. Actually, getting, yeah, getting the double kill. So, Marietta was able to shut down the Vigar, but Kane there with a triple kill, and now they're going to be able to secure the Ocean Drake. So... While Marietta was able to steal the Baron buff, it just shows that this game is still very strong. And we're pretty much even in gold at 26 minutes. It looks like Muskingum is hoping to try to pick off Relic. Muskingum is going to just take control of Marietta's jungle at this point. Alright, so we're at about almost 28 minutes. The Ash Air does come out. It does catch Seraphine, but it's not gonna do a whole lot. Muskingum is up by a thousand gold. And they do have peak control of all of Marietta's jungle. So they're gonna rotate to the bot lane to try to take out the uh, the bottom tower, but you see Vigar and Malphite still in that mid lane to continue their pressure there. seeing the ulti coming up by Lila and a huge engagement by Marietta taking out the Vigar but re-engaged by Malphite the charm's gonna be coming out to connect too 
And Barrier takes out three. Kane does take out one, though. Actually takes down two himself, but Muki takes, uh, yeah, takes him down. So that is a four for two in favor of Marietta. It all started with a huge engage, gain the pick off on the Vigar. That's really how Marietta's gonna win this. They have to shut down the Vigar so he doesn't get too powerful. Now Kane's becoming a big threat though at nine, six, and six, but they were able to win that. So we'll see if they're able to get anything off this. The yeah, Ash Arrow does come out. Rayleigh takes a couple of turret hits, but they will back away. So it doesn't look like they're going to get too much from it. But once again, the gold difference is now back to about 100 gold. We do see Ocean Drake's going to be up in about 40 seconds. The Baron buff is all, Baron's already up, and Marion is starting to converge over there. Are they just going to try to step some vision? And Lust Kingdom is looking for an engage. But they're not going to get the engage that they want. Now we see Kane trying to come in, pops the ulti onto Muki, uses the Zanyas to stay alive. A great, a huge shutdown. Three are already down for Marietta. And Muskingum just deletes Marietta. And with the death timers they are, Muskingum's gonna just they're deciding whether to go Baron or base. They're gonna go straight for the base and try to finish the game. But there's the turret, there's the Nexus Tower. And with Death Timer still up, this is going to probably be enough to finish the, the match for Muskingum. So with that, folks, uh, Marietta will fall to Muskingum in what was a very close match, but they got the jump on Marietta at the very end. Yeah, at the very end, at the very end. They got the, the jump on that last fight, and they were able to take out uh, three of the, the Pioneers, and that was enough to finish off the rest. So yeah, that will be it. So congratulations to Muskingum for their, their win. But all right, that is going to be it for us today. Well, at least for now. Uh, later on... Our Rainbow Six team will be playing against Elon University. Uh, that will be at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. So hopefully you do come back for that. Uh, for all the latest updates with what's going on with Marriott Esports, please be sure to follow us on social media at Marriott Esports, whether it's on Twitch or Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or even YouTube. So from all of us here, thank you so much for watching, and we hope you hope to see you later on today, actually.